Hey there, welcome to How to Write a Novel. Let me tell you about what a delightful day this just became. So it's a steel gray sky, rainy and shitty, slightly unrainy at this very moment. But uh, I was like, oh man, this day sucks. And uh, I was almost like struggling with myself of like, I could just feel a big philosophical rant coming on of, uh, I was texting with my friend Brad last night about like movies and he's like, hey, this movie is pretty cool. And I was like, I guess, but I just like, I'm just like really coming to terms with the fact that I hate movies. <laughs> For years it's been this like, I literally don't like sitting there watching a movie. It drives me nuts. Like uh, when I went to see Blade Runner 2049 or whatever in uh, Toronto, I literally had to like walk it off after. I was angry <laughs> like when I left because it's just so long and aimless and boring and shit. And it's not that movie specifically, it's every movie. I'm just like, oh, I hate it. I hate this. I hate being trapped inside a movie theater with these goddamn movies. Like, they've just never been worse. Maybe it's because I'm getting older. Maybe it's because the internet age has uh, diffused media. I don't know, who knows, man, whatever. I'm just like, I would just rather not roll the dice. I'm like, like I don't even want to debate, like, oh, was this movie good? Was that movie good? Oh, it might have been good except for this, or this ending could have been. I just don't, I just don't want to partake anymore. <laughs> I'm just done. I just, I can't remember the last time I saw a movie that shook me up and was like, oh shit, this is saying some shit. Because it just, it really seems like just movies in general. It's just promoting, just here's life, here's our boring society, here's our dumb non-ideas. Everybody just gather around and let's all not confront anything. Or even if it's just going to be flippant, let's not even be fun. Let's not even be a fun experience. Let's just fucking suck. And yeah, yeah, occasionally a movie's good, but... But uh, I'm just like, oh, so anyway, I just said I wasn't going to talk about it, now I'm just talking about it. But I was like, you know what, I could talk about how the mainstream is just completely leaving me behind. Like, there's just nothing there for me anymore. But places like YouTube and stuff, sometimes there's still stuff there. And in fact, I think I will talk about that, but I'll get to it in a moment. Because I just want to say what just happened, though, that cheered me the shit up. It just was like, yeah, that's making this day good. Is I was just walking between two SkyTrain stations that uh, like Coquitlam Central and Inlet Central, I guess they're called. And it's just like a highway. It's not a nice walk, but I'm just like, well, fuck it. It's not raining for a second. Let's just walk down this and see what happens. Let's just see what that's like. And on the way there was a music store, a Tom Lee Music. And I've been meaning to try to get a proper windscreen for this recorder. And my old like clown nose style windscreen is like falling apart. It's barely a thing anymore. <laughs> it's just like, it's all torn and ripped. So I stopped in to see if they had something appropriate to my recorder and they don't. They have a lot of stuff for the Zoom line, the Zoom brand, but nothing that specifically fit this recorder. So the guy was like, well, hold on, let me just go check my rental stuff. Like, let's just, let me just go to the next room and just see what's in there. Let's just see what I can find. And he found me uh, a new clown nose, you know? He's like, well, I got the clown nose one. And if you want it, hey, here you go, just, just have it. And I was like, awesome. I mean, I don't know how much this thing, it probably would only be a few dollars anyway. But who knows, man, I mean, these accessory kits and like, you know, those uh, wind socks that look like a big boar, <laughs> boar hair mitten or whatever, those things are like $50. So I'm like, who knows, man, I don't care what it costs, I'll just pay whatever. And he's like, just have it, just take it, man. And I was just like, awesome, thank you, like right on. And I just love that, like back when I was a clerk at the comic shop or, uh, my first run as a coffee guy, not as much the second time, because the second time was at a bourgeois fucking cheesecake shop next to a diamond store, and everyone who came in there was a dick who can go fuck themselves. They can pay full price for shit. But I was a, a big fan of giving away things. and like, here you go, just here you go. Just have this, because you seem cool. 
But I never really expect that kind of thing to be paid forward because, you know, people take their positions very seriously. Like, these are the rules, we cannot break the rules. It's such a great feeling when some guy just breaks the rules and he's like, yeah, you know what, here you go, just have fun. If you ever need something else, come on back. So I highly recommend the Tom Lee music <laughs> between Coquitlam Central and uh, Inlet Central. That place is cool and the people that work there are cool. Still not quite the windscreen that I need, but it will do for now. This little clown knows variety. It doesn't quite fight the wind as much as I need, but I'll find what I need in the future. And until then, that guy, he gave me the helping hand to get me across this chasm and just made me feel happy today. So let's keep heading forward to Moody Center, Moody Central, whatever. There's a Starbucks there that is quaint that I enjoy. So I'm gonna go there and do some writing. But yeah, rather than talk about writing, let's talk about me and my thoughts for a moment. Can we please? Can we please just talk about me for once, just for one episode? Can we just talk about me? <laughs> ah! I feel fucking weird today. It's like the whiplash effect of like, oh, this day sucks. Hey, this day's cool. And I think also being next to a busy highway is in a weird way kind of akin to just being alone on a beach or in the woods. Because you still feel weirdly isolated because there's so much traffic and so much noise that you can do whatever you want. You can be as loud as you want, you can be as weird as you want. And who, what's anybody gonna say? There's nobody here. Why would they be walking on this miserable stretch of highway? So yeah, what I wanna say is even though like movies and TV shows and stuff, I mean, I'm just, I've just had it. I don't miss them, I don't need them, I don't want them. <laughs> I'm sure that I will absorb enough random movies and TV just in the happenstance of life, just as I proceed along, that that will be plenty. As far as seeking things out, going out of my way to go to a movie theater or something, I don't think so. I don't fucking think so. I think those days have come to a close. You know, I'm sure I'll go see uh, Avengers or whatever. You know, I'll see some things here and there, but in general, I definitely get more value, and I have for a long time now, I guess, out of YouTube, out of just like vloggers, man. Like, like I love stumbling upon people and just learning about their lives, learning their little stories. Like, it's the exact opposite of how I feel like in the mainstream, things have never been less relevant and like the actual truth about life and what living is like has never been less represented than it is now. Where in these personal venues like a YouTube channel, that's where you get interesting shit. Here, let's get off the main drag for a sec. Maybe I can quiet this episode a little bit. So uh, just like a couple of weeks ago, just randomly on the sidebar of my YouTube shit, there was this video called Why My Voice Sounds This Way. And it was this girl, Steffi Lee. And I love how like these little windows into people's lives, like they really break down the sort of contrivances of like the imaginary version of life the imaginary view of how things are supposed to be, which, I mean, caused me a lot of pain in my life, you know, like a lot of unnecessary hand-wringing and depression, because my life isn't like the TV life, because my family isn't like the TV family. And it's just so great to learn more and more that nobody's life is that way. Wow, this is the quieter street, it's the loud as fuck. Cars. Oh God, I hate them. I hate them so much. Why aren't you all electric? Why aren't you all quiet? But yeah, it's quite an amazing thing to unravel and to start to realize about life is that 
nobody's life is the perfect ideal. Nobody's life fits the proper mold. But everybody is pretending that it does. And it's just so interesting to, like, because it's such a simple equation. It's like, okay, my life doesn't fit this supposed ideal of how things are supposed to be. But I presume that my neighbor's does. So I don't want to bring it up and I don't want to talk about it because the family on the left of me has got it together. The family on the right of me has got it together. So I don't want to draw attention to the fact that my family doesn't have it together. And that simple little equation is just multiplied by everyone, <laughs> you know? It's like human beings were just not that tough to predict sometimes that this one little intellectual fallacy that happens to one of us really happens to all of us. And I mean, when I really understood that, when I really realized that like the fact that my brother's all fucked up and the fact that my life is so weird and just whatever my particular problems might be. And then people would give that like phony baloney sort of like, oh, but everyone has problems. No, everyone is really like this. But in this fucking Disneyland way that it's like, you're not really saying that in a way that I believe. <laughs> you know, you're not saying that in a way that actually opens yourself up to me. It's just lip service. It still just feels fake. It's like, yeah, you're just saying that, but you're still acting like it's not, like you're not a part of it, like it's not affecting you, that it's only affecting me. Just phony, just feels phony. So yeah, it was quite a process to really, really learn for real that nobody fits the mold. Everyone's lives really are all weird and everyone is denying it because they fear that they're the only ones. So that's what I love so much about stuff like YouTube vlogging and podcasting and stuff. It's just me talking to you and there's nothing in between. There is nothing in the middle. If you're listening to some phony baloney podcaster or some phony baloney YouTube vlogger, that's on you. Nobody made you listen to that. You chose it, you know? If you don't want that, if what you're looking for is some realness, there is a pile of it. There's a mountain of it. And there's so many interesting YouTube communities of like people that live in their cars and in their vans and they're like, here's how that works. I found once it was like a whole enclave of nursing students and new nurses and they're like, here's what this life is like. Let's discuss amongst ourselves so we can all confirm our experiences. But also if you're on the outside and you want to know, here's what it's like. Here's what it's like to work at an old folks home. There's so much stuff that is so interesting. And this girl, Steffi Lee, is such uh, a great example of how quickly the layers peel off and how quickly the reality can present itself as way different from just your initial perceived impressions. Because this girl, she is gorgeous. She's this beautiful girl. She's in her early 20s, I guess. She's a blonde girl with dreadlocks and she was an art school student and she saved up to go to art school but she got a full scholarship so she still has that money. So now she just travels around and lives in her car and sometimes flies to other countries and she's an amazing artist. She does these like photorealistic beautiful drawings and she sells those to help fund her travel and it just seems so perfect on the surface. Like, wow, you're young, you're beautiful, you're talented, you travel. What could be better than this, you know? You couldn't make up something better than this. If this was a character in a movie, it would be like frustrating. You'd be like, come on, there's no people like that, <laughs> you know? But this is all the surface stuff. This is all just my surface impression. This isn't even like like, I guess how it seems initially, or what I expected, was like, oh, this seems like kind of a lifestyle vlogger who's just like, like the YouTube equivalent of somebody who like, uh, retouches all their Instagram photos or whatever, or only posts happy pictures on Facebook and like, just look how great my life is type of thing. 
but that is only the very barest surface impression and is not at all the truth of what's going on because in that first video that I saw the video of why does my voice sound like this it's because she always talks really quietly and she has kind of a raspy voice and she explains how she has cystic fibrosis and her lung capacity is way reduced and she'll probably die young because of this like it's a serious fucking thing it's not an affectation and she just kind of presents it straight up of like, yeah, here's my thing, man. So, I mean, yeah, I'm going to travel around. I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to be how I want because I might not have long to live. And even that, like, you know, I mean, if you want to be cynical about it, you could be like, oh, yeah, well, hey, there's no better way to get attention than this. But it just doesn't come off that way at all. She's really, really earnest and I'm just like, yeah, holy shit. I didn't expect that. This girl who on the surface seems to have all these things is actually way worse off than, than I am, than almost any of us are. And then the layers just kind of keep coming off. Like just today she posted a video of people questioning why she wears makeup. Because of course YouTube and the internet in general is just full of hate and ass fucks. But uh, they're like, hey, you have this kind of perceived bohemian lifestyle and bohemian ideals. And you posted a video about why you're not into shaving and why, you know, that's oppressive to expect women to shave their armpits and shave their legs. And I'm like, yeah, I, that's awesome. I agree with all that. And people were questioning, like, hey, if you uh, have this ideal, why do you wear makeup? You know, isn't that counter what you're saying about just being natural and being yourself? And I guess maybe that thought kind of crossed my mind, too, but I just was like, I didn't dwell on it. But she posted this video today about how the reason she wears makeup is that it's not a full face of makeup, it's just she draws on eyebrows and she has fake eyelashes because she has trichotillomania, which is like this compulsive OCD behavior where you pull out your hair, which holds a special place in my heart because I have that. I started developing it when I was still I guess just out of high school. I remember it was when Limp Biscuit was big is how I remember. And I didn't know what it was. And it was just like one of those things in the pre, I mean, the internet was around, but it wasn't what it is now. Just one of those weird little things that was just going on with me that I had no idea about. And it's like, why am I compulsively pulling out my hair? And why can't I stop? What is this? But I had just had never heard anything about it. It never really, I never told anyone about it because like, what do I say? And what are they going to say? They're not even going to know what it was. And then it passed and I forgot about it. And then years later it came back and then it passed and then it came back. And it wasn't until YouTube that I stumbled upon it. Just looking up stuff in general. There's this one YouTuber, I don't remember her name, but she's like the famous trichotillomania girl who has like time-lapse videos of her bald hair, her bald head, because she just can't stop. She just, like, you know, eventually gave up on the hair and just started wearing wigs, and then she started pulling out her eyebrows, and it's just like she just can't stop, and it's heartbreaking to watch this girl try for years to get over this, and she just can't, because it's just this unexplainable OCD, stress-related, possibly, thing that just doesn't make sense, and no one understands, but it's a thing. And I know it's a thing because I motherfucking have it. I mean, like, that's the reason I buzzed my hair early on the run of this podcast. Because I just was like, I give up. I've been trying to stop this latest batch of this for like four months. And it just won't. I just can't. And it's finally, it was getting a little bit to the point where I could tell a little bit. It's like, yeah, my hair is uh, getting noticeably thinner around my bangs and stuff because that's where it's easiest to pull. But I'm lucky because when I buzz my hair off, it's gone. Like that's it. That's my only compulsion is to pull the hair from my head. And even then only when it's like getting long. When it's short, I'm cured. I don't move on to something else. It's just, it's over. I don't especially love having a real short hair because I am getting older. My hairline is creeping upward but as solutions go, it's an easy one. It's an easy fix. 
Whereas other people, you know, they move on. They pull out their eyebrows. They pull out their, their eyelashes, which like to me, that sounds so like, man, that's severe. You're pulling out your eyelashes. That seems nuts. But I mean, I guess to normal people, pulling out any of your hair seems nuts, you know, right? There's really no gradation there. So this girl, Steffi Lee, that's one of the big reasons that she first dreadlocked her hair is because then she couldn't pull out individual strands, you know? You can't pull out a whole dreadlock or, you know, that's not, that's not how this works. It's like a fine motor skill type of thing. But she could never stop with her eyebrows and her eyelashes. So she ends the video by showing, like, you know, that she said in 10 years, like, I've never, no one's ever seen me like this because I just get up in the morning, I spend 20 minutes putting on makeup and I look like a normal person because back in school, before she started putting on makeup, you know, it was nothing but horrible judgment and rejection because she's the girl with no eyebrows. And man, it's really something at the end of this video. Like, she's like, so let me show you. Let me, it's just right at the end of the video. A little time lapse of like her taking off her makeup. And then there she is. She's this person with no eyebrows and no eyelashes. And this beautiful girl. It's amazing what a difference it makes. It's like, whoa, like, just how much of our perception of what makes someone attractive comes down to such small details. Because it's the same face, it's the same facial structure, it's the same person, but she just looks so different. I love that, that there's this venue now, this ability for us to just communicate directly to each other, one-on-one. -on -one that doesn't have to be filtered through anything, that doesn't have to go through any committees, that doesn't need a budget, that doesn't need anything. So that stuff like this can be presented for like the first time ever. There's never been a time in human history when we can shake off the, just the shackles of the dumb group, of the group associations, of the group assumptions about how things should be, of the shame of not fitting into the group, when nobody fits into the group. Anyone who does, who thinks they fit into the group, who feels like they fit into the group, they're just the best at denial. They're just the best at lying to themselves. They're just the best at ignoring the ways that they don't fit into the group. And I got no time for them. And I love that now, like my actual people, my kind of people, we can just express how it really is, how our lives really are, how things really are. And it's so fucking awesome. And it's just like, why? Why do I need these movies? Why do I need this fake ass bullshit? <laughs> you know? When I would just a million times over rather just watch the vlog of somebody who's just admitting what their life is like. So I guess that's, uh, that's what was on my mind today. <laughs> Maybe I'll talk more about my actual writing tomorrow. But, uh, Whatever, I do these every day. It's no big hurry to get the update. So yeah, man, focus on the individual. Focus on the individuality. Focus on the truth. If you can help somebody out with, a, <laughs> with a, a windscreen for their recorder, and you do, you're an awesome person. Look out for one another. Look out for we, the individuals. And don't ever turn your back on the truth. Don't ever turn your back on the reality of what this life is about just in order to appease the, the fake version of life. This, among many other reasons, is why I'm sure I will never get to make a movie. <laughs> you know? But again, fuck that. I can make a movie. I can make a movie on a goddamn cell phone these days. It's all coming down, man. Whole world's coming to an end, Mal. That old world is shriveling up. That old world is disappearing. And we don't need them motherfuckers because the new world is better. New world is tough. New world takes bravery. In the new world, you can't just pretend everything's okay when things are not okay. But by traveling through this fucking jungle, We'll get to a place where things really are okay, and we don't just have to pretend that they're okay.
Hey, here's a little bonus bit. So I just stopped at the Shared Treasures thrift store and I got this book, the first book in the Fearless series. Cause I was like, isn't that that TV show where it was like Rachel Lee Cook and she had no fear. She was born without the fear gene or whatever. I used to really like Rachel Lee Cook between uh, She's All That and Josie and the Pussycats and that uh, This Is Your Brain on Drugs commercial. <laughs> she was pretty cool. But I never watched that show. But this book was only 75 cents and it's such a neat uh, concept. It's such a neat idea. How it'll actually go uh, remains to be seen. But this is a great first thing. This is like the first page, man. I love this. Losers with no imagination say that if you start a new school, there has to be a first day. How come they haven't figured out how to beat that? Just think existentially. All you do is take what's supposed to be the first day and bury it someplace in the next month. By the time you get around to it a month later, who cares? When I first heard the word existential, I didn't know what it meant so I never used it. But then I found out that no one knows what it means. So now I use it all the time. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. I love that. All right. Thank you for joining me for Thrift Store Book Theater. And I'll see you tomorrow.